Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with golden chicken. That's right, this chicken is golden, almost literally and definitely figuratively. And no, this was not a food wish. This is something I threw together a little while back and I thought it was so delicious that after a few bites, I got up and I walked into the office and I wrote everything down, which I will almost never do. But that is just how amazing I thought this was. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by prepping four chicken legs, which of course includes the thigh and the drumstick. And what I like to do first is take a knife and with the skin side up, I like to make one cut into the thickest part of the drumstick all the way down to the bone, and then two cuts about an inch apart right in the center of the thigh. And besides helping our seasonings penetrate deeper into the meats, this will also allow our legs to cook a little faster. Although we're still gonna simmer this for a couple hours. So it's mostly the first reason, and then once our chicken's been slashed, we will season this very generously on both sides with kosher salt. And for what's basically about three pounds of meat, just a little pinch of salt here and there is not going to do. Okay, you're going to need to sprinkle on at least a couple teaspoons. So please don't be shy with the salt. And then what we'll do once that's been accomplished is head to the stove, where we're going to sear this chicken skin side down and a little bit of olive oil set over high heat. And we're going to want to sear this chicken for at least five or six minutes, or until that skin is nicely brown. And we are doing this for appearance and because it will make the chicken taste better, but we're also doing it to render fat from the skin, which is gonna give it a better texture once it's braised, but it's also gonna give us something very, very delicious to saute our aromatic vegetables in. So we will go ahead and thoroughly sear that skin side and then we'll flip them over and we'll give the other side about two minutes. And that's it, we can go ahead and turn off the heat and we'll remove that tube plate and reserve it until needed. And as promised, in our pan, we not only have olive oil now, but we also have a good amount of very delicious chicken fat. And what we'll do at this point is turn our heat back on to medium, and we will toss in what we call in the business, the Holy Trinity, which is onion, celery, and some kind of pepper, which in my case is a jalapeno. And we'll also toss in a nice big pinch of salt. And what we'll do is cook this stirring occasionally until our onions turn translucent and those veggies soften up. And while that's happening, we have a couple options. All right, if we're a bad cook, we just stare at the pan, stirring it once in a while and not doing anything else. But if we're a good cook, which I like to think we are, we can measure out our spices and get those ready while this sautés. So that's what I did. And our golden chicken spice blend will include some ground cumin, some smoked paprika, some coriander, some turmeric, which is one of the two ingredients responsible for the golden color, and you'll see the other one in a minute. And then we also want some freshly ground black pepper, some cayenne, of course. And then last but not least, a little bit of cinnamon. And that's it, we'll grab our spices and head to the stove, where as you know, we've been multitasking. And assuming those onions are translucent and the vegetables have softened up, and they look something like this, we'll go ahead and toss in our spices, along with three or four cloves of crushed garlic, at which point we will cook this stirring, still on medium heat, for about two minutes or so to not only cook the garlic a bit, but also much more importantly, to toast those spices a little bit, which really does wake up and amplify the flavors. At which point we'll stop and add a little bit of tomato paste, which is gonna provide some acidity and umami, not to mention warm up our golden color a little bit. And then speaking of acidity, we'll also add a couple tablespoons of white wine vinegar or any vinegar, followed by a couple cups of nice cold fresh water, and then we'll also at this point toss in our second golden ingredient, which would be one teaspoon of saffron threads, which look like this. And hopefully you have some left over from our chicken rice aroni recipe. And we'll go ahead and break those up a little bit with our fingertips and toss them in. And we will give everything a stir and also raise our heat back up to high since we want this to come back to a simmer. And while we're waiting for that to happen, we will add two semi-secret ingredients, which are a teaspoon of currants which is gonna provide some beautiful earthy sweetness to balance the other flavors. And then I'm also gonna add one teaspoon of chicken bouillon base, which yes, is also golden. Or of course, instead of water, you could just use chicken broth and accomplish the same thing. But for this particular dish, I think the chicken base works best. And then once this does come up to a simmer, we will add our chicken back in, skin side up. And then once we have those legs back where they're supposed to be, We'll reduce our heat to low, at which point I like to take a spoon and give these a baste, although I can't tell you exactly why. I mean, there's really no good scientific reason, 
But if there's one thing I've learned, reasons don't always have to be scientific, right? Once in a while, it's just okay to go with intuition. But anyway, once those have been basted and the tops are nice and moist, and we have those situated exactly how we want, we will cover this and we will let it simmer on low or whatever heat setting gives you a nice gentle simmer. And we will cook this for exactly one hour, at which point it's probably going to look something very similar to this. And then what we'll do is flip these over so the skin sides down. And at this point, our chicken is technically cooked and totally safe to eat, but it is definitely not done because this meat has to be, must be fork tender and close to falling off the bone. So what we'll do once those have been flipped is cover this back up and we will let it simmer gently for another 30 minutes, at which point we're still not done, but we're getting close, so hang in there. And we'll go ahead and flip those over one last time and we'll take a spoon and give them another basting. Again, possibly for no good reason, but man, it just feels right. And then to finish this off, Besides giving them the occasional basting, we are going to raise our heat up to medium and we're going to cook this chicken uncovered until our chicken is very tender and those braising liquids have reduced down a little bit into something we will eventually call a sauce, which of course will concentrate and intensify all those beautiful flavors. And while that happens, if you want, we can skim some of the fat off the top, which I usually do to about half of it. But anyway, that's up to you. I mean, you are after all the thirst and howl of your golden fowl, but that stuff is very flavorful. So I think we do want to keep a little bit. So I skimmed and I basted, and about 30 minutes later, my golden chicken looked like this, and it smelled absolutely incredible, but you can't be telling by smelling. So we definitely want to give our braising liquids a taste, and we can adjust the seasoning if need be. Plus, we want to double check our meat is very, very tender, as in a fork or knife should go in with almost no effort. And that's it. Once we're happy with how it smells, looks, and feels, we'll go ahead and serve that up, which I'm going to do on some Yukon Gold mashed potatoes. And all I added to those was a little bit of butter and some salt. Okay, because I'm going to ladle over a lot of this braising liquid, I did not add any milk or cream to the potatoes, since I didn't want those too loose. And also, this is a fairly rich dish, so I really don't think it's necessary anyway. And then for a final touch, since cooking is all about contrast, I top this with a fine dice of jalapeno and green onion, just for some brightness and freshness, and a little bit of crunchy texture. Plus that little bit of bitterness raw peppers add really does elevate all the other flavors. And that's it, my golden chicken was ready to enjoy. And that, my friends, really was incredible. And while it's not based on any one single classic chicken recipe, it combines key elements of three of my favorites, which would be a chicken curry, a chicken tagine, and a Creole-style smothered chicken. Which is why, by the way, I had trouble figuring out what to call this. So I went with the double entendre and called it golden chicken, which it really is. And as I add a little more sauce onto this, I should mention, we could have added some flour when we sauteed our vegetables, which of course would have thickened up our braising liquids, which I think would be fine. But texture-wise, I was just in the mood for something a little lighter, and I did not regret that decision. Oh, and because I like to give one piece of super obvious advice in every video, let me tell you that if you're not into mashed potatoes, this would be stellar on rice or noodles. In fact, you could even do a brothier version and do it in a bowl of noodles like a ramen. But as you probably know by now, I have a mashed potato fetish, and that is usually my default starch. And I did think it worked incredibly well here. But no matter what you serve this with or on or in, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.